Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns here. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the cloud. So I want to start with an example. Imagine that you go into your work and suppose that in this company, you're the only data scientist. Now, initially you were just training some very simple machine learning models using your work laptop. It was a pretty small laptop, but it was still able to manage fine. You trained some simple models and you were able to get some results. That's great. But what if now the organizational need was to train just one time a generative AI model? Well, to train that model, you can't really use your laptop because it's going to be pretty small in terms of those resources. So what can you do? Well, you can upgrade. So you can go out, buy a really expensive rig. Uh, you would want to have a couple of these really expensive NVIDIA GPUs on there. You would want to have enough storage, enough capacity, all of those different things. So you'll have to really upgrade your entire system. You can train your generative AI models then. But then after that one time of training, what do you do with all of that expensive equipment? You can re return it maybe and then get back part of your cost. Or you can use something like the cloud. So the analogy is, imagine that you've been driving around in a Toyota, but you kind of wanted to experience driving a Ferrari. You're not going to go out and then buy a Ferrari, uh, take out an expensive loan. What you would do is just go and rent a Ferrari for about two hours, come back home to your Toyota. So that's kind of how the cloud system will work. Now, there are three main cloud domains. We have AWS, we have Google Cloud, and we have Microsoft Azure. So it doesn't really matter because all three of them have pretty similar services. Um, I would say if you know one, you pretty much just know the other two as well. Now, is there one in particular that I would recommend starting off with? Um, not really. I would say the most popular ones are going to be AWS followed by probably Azure. I think Google Cloud comes in third in terms of popularity. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. So let's just say that you decide to select one cloud platform, which is Azure. Well, with Microsoft Azure, when you sign up the first time, you get um, you can try Azure for free. And when you create a free account, you get $200 of credit that you can use. So it's a really great way to get started. Um, just go over to azure.microsoft.com, click on try Azure for free. And then when you sign up with the free account, you get that $200 credit for everyone. Then when you sign up with the account, you immediately will be provided with this console. So this is what I see, right? This is my Microsoft Azure sort of cloud interface. Now, the scenario that I gave in the beginning was, hey, look, I want to train a generative AI model, but I want to borrow a resource from the cloud. Well, I can do that. I can create something known as a virtual machine. It's kind of like me borrowing a server that's available in the cloud. I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to pay for uh, any upgrades myself. I'm just sort of borrowing the resources of this huge GPU that's available right now. Um, and I don't need to wait or anything. It just has to immediately deploy and I can start using it. Um, imagine that I wanted to do something similar, but instead of uh, borrowing something for uh, doing some or training some generative AI model, I was running into storage issues. So if I'm working in a company, I'm collecting a lot of information or a lot of data. Uh, initially, I was storing all of that data in hard drives, and now I'm starting to get more and more and more clients. And I'm unable to then store all of the information in just physical hard drives. So what do I do? Well, I can go to Azure and create a SQL database in the cloud. So it's not really going to be filling up all of this information on my physical hard drive. Now it's going to start filling in all of these um, or all of my client's information directly on in the cloud. So it makes my life so much easier because I don't have to worry about scalability. So those are two services that we just looked at. In Azure, we have so many different services. Let's start by looking at the virtual machine. So here again, the whole goal is I want to create some sort of a um, computer that's going to be able to process all of my data and create a generative AI model. So I'm going to create a virtual machine under subscription. I can leave it the default one under resource group. Let me create one called Gen AI. Uh, everything else can just remain default. I'm going to call this one my 
gen AI server. And then everything else can pretty much remain standard. Don't need to touch anything else. Here I can select if I want a Windows 10 server or if I want Ubuntu. We'll take a look at Ubuntu later on. I highly recommend um, using this or getting accustomed to using some sort of Linux operating system and this is the best way to do it. Uh, and then the size. So when you sign up, you have that $200 credit, but if you wanted to just use something like the B1 LS, it only costs about $3.80 per month. So it's about 0 0.005 per hour. Don't copy on that math though. Um, so if I see all sizes, I can decide if I want something that's going to be more compute intensive, if I want something a little bit more um, CPU heavy, GPU heavy, I can see all of those different things. So over here, let's just say that I select one that's maybe the B1S. And uh, I just need to create a username and a password. So let me do that. Okay. And then I'm going to select the public inbound ports, leave all of these fine, and then review and create. So now that it's doing this, it will allow me to create this virtual machine. And once the deployment is complete, you can simply go to your resource. And then here, you can try to hit connect. And then we'll select the native RDP option and we'll simply download this file. Once the file is downloaded, we can simply click on it and then hit connect. And once I do that, say yes. And there we go. This is the Windows machine that's currently running in the cloud. It's not using any of the resources of my computer. It's using all of the resources of the cloud. So if I wanted to, I could have gotten maybe a really heavy rig to train something like a large language model. Um, I can do that, run it, and then download the weights or store the weights into some other service like Azure Blob or something, and then turn off my virtual machine. So we understood how we can start a virtual machine, but if you wanted to stop one or completely delete one, all you would do is go back over to Microsoft Azure, go to your resource group, select the one that you just created, and then hit delete, copy this, and then simply paste it here, and then everything should be deleted so you don't have to worry about accidentally incurring any additional costs or anything like that. Now, if you wanted to learn all of these things from scratch, the course that I would recommend is Microsoft Azure um, Fundamentals. Now, all of the materials for this course is available for free online. So just type in AZ900. And once you do that, you'll be able to see like there are three learning paths that you can take in this course syllabus. Now, these three things are all a part of the AZ900 exam. You don't need to take the exam, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, and then the first part is just describing all of the cloud concepts, like what the cloud is, um, what's the benefit of the cloud, those kind of things. The second course is just describing all of the different services that exist within Microsoft Azure. Um, and here you'll also learn about the sandbox environment. So it's cool because uh, the sandbox allows you to really um, experiment with things in the cloud, but you know within this contained environment. So if anything goes wrong, you can just simply, it doesn't matter, it's just a sandbox. So um, you have tons and tons of labs and everything available for free online here. So I would recommend using this to get really get started. And yeah, there are a ton of different services that are available in the cloud. So if you click on more services, we have some for AI machine learning. So things like custom vision, um, we have things for different compute. So we'll see our virtual machines here somewhere. Uh, we have for containers, for databases. Um, we have some general services that are available. I really like the AI machine learning services that Azure has. So you can even look at the ones for, looks like my resource group got deleted. Um, you can even look at the one for a Azure OpenAI. And then if all you would do is for whatever you have, you can simply create an um, Azure OpenAI service. Same concept as before, you just need some um, name, pricing tier, all of that kind of stuff. If you select the standard one, it's completely free or free last time I checked. I don't know if it still is free or not. 
But um, yeah, you have Internet of Things, you have for mo different monitoring services for security, networking. Um, and basically, all you would do is for whatever service that you want to learn, say that you want to learn something like Databricks. Well, you would simply click here, Azure Databricks, and then create the Databricks service. And then you can just go out, explore it. And then once you're done, just simply delete the resource group. And the best part is that you have that $200 um, credit, and it's really hard to spend that $200 the first time. So uh, definitely make use of that and also make use of all of these free services that are available through Azure Learning. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, hopefully it gave you an understanding of what the cloud is. If you've never used the cloud before, um, you now have a solid idea about where to get started. Um, I would recommend using all of the free resources available on the Microsoft page. If you want to learn AWS, AWS also has a similar learning page as well. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, then please um, subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Uh, if you want me to cover um, similar videos or anything in particular, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. And thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.